Newsmaker Sunday with Fox 10's John Hook. Thanks for joining us on Newsmaker Sunday. You're going to meet a guy that, um, given his predecessor and his, um, I guess, compatriot in Maricopa County, who's uh, now not in office anymore, uh, Mark Lamb is a guy um, that we're going to talk a lot about here, certainly in the next 30 minutes, but you're going to be hearing about him a lot over the next four years. He is the new sheriff of, Pin of Pinell County. And uh, elected in November with a big margin. You won your primary big, and you won the general just as big. Yeah, we were very fortunate. And thanks for having me today. Good, John. good to Thank see you. you. It's good yeah. to meet you finally. Um, you follow Paul Babu. He got a lot of national press. Yeah, he was very well known around Arizona and around the country. When you ran, what was it that you wanted to do that you didn't think was being addressed in Pinal County? You know, for me, it was more above Pinal County. I lived in Pinal County, so it was the ideal for me, fit for me. I wanted to make this country better. And I looked at what skills and what experience I had um, with my business experience, law enforcement experience, and just I feel like my personal skills. I felt like a sheriff would be a good fit for me. And being that I lived in Pinal County, it was, it was the ideal place to, uh, to do that. Let's go through your history. It's interesting. You grew up in Hawaii. Correct. Right? On yes. the Big Island. Yes. How do you end up in Chandler? Well, my dad is actually uh, raised in Chandler. Okay. And so they were farmers back in the day and dairymen. And uh, we ended up back in Chandler about when I was in junior high. So I went to junior high and high school in Chandler. Okay. Chandler High grad. You're a big guy. You played ball? I uh, played baseball. Played, played baseball. baseball, yes. Now, your dad ends up in Hawaii. Why? Uh, originally, my dad is a graduate of Thunderbird Business College here in Phoenix, um, international business. And so he actually was in Hawaii doing potato farm, farming originally. Yeah, this has become very, very high tech. Yes. Yeah. The farming business. Yeah. And from there, he actually got into scrap metal. We actually did a lot of scrap metal, and that was pretty much our business throughout the years. What's happening right now in Pinal County that concerns you the most? I mean, you know, your predecessor, Paul Babb, you talked a lot about illegal immigration. Is that the issue, as big of an issue as he made it out to be? Or is this a legitimate issue and a, and a legitimate drug corridor? You know, illegal immigration, illegal aliens is an issue for all of us in this state. So we're not any different than any of the other counties. Right. Um, our location does, you know, bring some of that in there. But is that I-8? Is yeah. that the reason? Well, we have the I-8 and I-10 corridor. Right. So, and it, it doesn't, it's not different from the other places. It's not a challenge that they're not facing. We have different challenges within that. Um, but that's, you know, that's pretty par for the course here for most of the counties. Are you recalibrating how much emphasis to put on that versus what your predecessor put on that? Because that, that takes a lot of resources, a lot of money. You know, I think the recalibration is we're making sure that our relationships with our federal partners are in place. It's a job too big for just the sheriff's office. It's a, t it's a job too big for Border Patrol. Um, so we're working with Border Patrol, Homeland Security Investigations, ICE. Mm -hmm. And, and our local partners to be able to, to take care of that problem. Let's go through your history a little bit. You, um, you, you end up in the academy for the Maricopa County Sheriff's Department, I but you didn't work for them. Correct, correct. So I actually was hired by the Salt River uh, Police Department for the Salt River, River Pima Maricopa mm -hmm. Indian community. And, I've been stopped uh, by those guys a couple of times <laughs> driving home. Down the 101, yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, and so They've I, been very nice, by the way. Oh, great place to work. I really enjoyed working for that I'm, community. I'm, I'm, I'm batting about 500. I got out of one <laughs> ticket, and I got another one. That's so, pretty good. You know, it all depends right. on if it's a motor officer or not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, what did you learn working on the reservation? You know, it was a great place to learn. And so I went through the academy at the Maricopa County mm -hmm. Sheriff's Office. Um, it, the reason it was great, it, it, there was a lot of opportunities. There was a lot of training opportunities. Um, within two years, I was on the gang and drug team. Um, so we were, that was our primary responsibilities. And so that gave me a, a lot of training, a lot of experience that was, benefited me in this last mm -hmm. campaign. When you went through uh, Maricopa County Sheriff's Department, their, their training, our pile was there at that time. Correct. Right? Yeah. This would have been what year? I went through in 2006. What were you doing before that? I had had several businesses throughout the years. I was a businessman, and uh, I had had a business at the time, um, and I, my neighbor across the street was a police officer with Salt River. He said, hey, why don't you come on a ride-along with me? So I went on a ride-along one night, and... No oh, kidding. I was hooked. That started hooked. it. Yeah, that started it. It's, it's been said that this was, you made the decision five years ago to run for Pinal County Sheriff. 
that you were, it's described, a stepping stone toward getting that job. What was it about that job, this job you currently hold, that was so alluring to you? You know, I, I just wanted to be in a position where I felt like I could make a difference. And, and you uh, feel that, that sheriff is that spot? Absolutely. I think More than board of supervisors or down at the legislature or running for Congress or... I really do. You know, I think that the sheriff is a, is a unique position. It's constitutionally protected and it's, it's something that allows us to get out and really make a difference because I, res I respond to the people. Right. <clears throat> I'm not beholden to a city council or a tribal council or, you know, though we work with the board of supervisors, the sheriff his boss is the people and so I serve at the this sounds like another people. guy I've heard <laughs> Joe, Ar uh, Joe Arpaio used to say that same thing yeah and you know I've met with Joe and I I like Joe I've always had uh, great talks with him and and he's part of the reason you know seeing him throughout the years as I lived in Maricopa County in Chandler right. you know he was a good example of what uh, what a sheriff can do if we can run the video of uh, do we have Paul Penn's own video I'm sorry <laughs> Sheriff Babu video um, Following Sheriff Babieu, a very high-profile guy, how's that transition been? How's the public reacted to that? Do you think that it was time that, that there was a transition here? Yes, I do think it and was why? time. And yeah, why? I think people want a sheriff that's going to be there for a long time. You know, and, and kudos to uh, my predecessor for making that step to try to run for Congress and do things different. He felt like that was what he needed to do. You saw uh, that coming too, by the way, didn't you? I did, and that's one of the reasons I made the decision in 2011 to, I took a pay cut to go to Pinal County. Uh, I worked there for a few years, and then I had to step away from something I loved doing to prepare to, to run for office. And so, um, you know, following in his footsteps, his, there's been difficult things, because he did. He, a lot of people knew the sheriff, loved the sheriff, um, but it was ready. I think the people of Pinal County, and the results in the voting show that. In terms of direction, how are you taking the department now versus where he was taking it? You know, I, I believe in empowerment. What we've done is I believe that I, I need to be in touch with the community, and I want to focus on our local issues in our, in, in our state and how we can empower that, those areas. Mm -hmm. um, we also... Um, we're going to, I mean, that's really, it. we're focusing on, on the people of Pinal County. How about your rank and file deputies? And, 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 and that's what I was saying, empowering. So we empower them. What we want is these guys are trained. We give them a gun and a badge. We can't hold them back. We need to let them go out and do the job. And when you, if you're on top of them too much, then they tend to make bad decisions. Mm -hmm. And so what we do is we empower them. Are we going to make the, mo the correct decision every time? No, we're not perfect. It's impossible. It's impossible. What did you tell, uh, do, do you, when you win, do you have a meeting of the entire department to try to address everybody and say, here's the deal, here I am, here's what I want to do? Did you have that moment? I didn't. I wish I could. So we are, we're a large county. I mean, right. Most people know we're about no, the size of the state of Connecticut. It's growing like a bad weed. It right? is. It's, it's huge. You know, and the growth is great. The growth is great, and we want to help that growth it's challenging the sheriff's now. office. But it is challenging. And so we've got, we, we've got deputies spread out throughout the county, and they work 12-hour shifts. So a guy comes on at 6 a.m. When he leaves at 6 p.m., the next guy comes on. And because of the logistics of it, it's really impossible for us to get everybody together in one place. So how do you communicate with them? Well... That's one of my focuses right now. Um, we came in and we addressed, we basically, we, we used the metaphor that we've been laying the foundation. You know, and sometimes you don't see the walls coming up, and that's when people notice you're building something. We've been laying the foundation. We're working with the county. We're working with our local partners, our federal partners. Mm -hmm. We're making sure that we create a good work environment for the deputies. Now I'm shifting my focus a little bit to where I want to get out and spend time with the deputies and get to know, find out exactly what are some of the things they want to see. I had an opportunity to, to get a lot of that feedback throughout the campaign. Sure. But you want to ride ongoing. along. You want to ride along. This Absolutely. is something uh, Babu did yeah. in Pinal County. He rode, did some ride alongs, and he said that was very helpful to go it out is. there. Tell me, uh, for people who don't understand the division of responsibility, this is really basic, but in Pinal County, your biggest city would be what? Casa Grande <laughs> or no? Not really. You're looking at. So the biggest city is Casa Grande. It is. Yes, that's the biggest city. However, the largest area of population is Santan Valley.
which wants to be its own city. And if I'm not, you know, I think Santan Valley is actually the largest cor in unincorporated area in the country. Right. At about 100,000 people. And they are attempting right now, they, they just got through the House, I think, in the Senate. Yes. Um, to We've now got video of that, as a matter of fact. Santan Valley. Sorry, I got ahead of you. No, no, that's fine. We can show that video as we're talking about it. That's a large unincorporated area. You service it. But just for the division of responsibility, so people understand, for instance, where does Casa Grande police end and you begin? So, and I don't know exactly where the boundaries but are. How but how do you decide who's sheriff? Is it just basically the boundary of the city? That's correct. So whatever the city is annexed in, whatever belongs to the city is under the jurisdiction of that particular police department. So you guys are all the unincorporated areas. Exactly. And sometimes you have these unincorporated islands within the cities. Predominantly, it's what's on the outskirts. It's the more rural areas, the, right. you know, the farms, the ranches, some of the houses that are in the more rural areas. So is that to say that urban policing doesn't really apply? In those particular areas, it, they're not, it, not in its true form. So we actually, that's the difference between a sheriff's office. Most sheriff's offices are policing more rural areas. You'll have one deputy show up where if you go into a police department inside of a city, you might have two, three units show up on one call. Right. Well, most of our deputies, they have to handle their calls all by themselves, and they're usually out a ways away from... It's, it's dangerous. ...from any backup, yes. It's dangerous. Yep. And you don't have the luxury of riding two people to a vehicle. No, you don't. And, you know, we, uh, we patrol Santan Valley, which we have to patrol like a city, even though we're a county agency, right. we patrol that like a city, and we... It feels like a city now. It, it, it does. And we have to do it with a limited amount of deputies. We typically patrol that area with seven deputies, so it's a wow. it's a lot of work for for our guys. Um, when you when you ran, the question was asked of you: Why are you running? You said our country needs people in elected positions whose goal it is to serve the citizens with pure motives and high ideals. I can use my talents in business and law enforcement to honorably serve my country and defend the Constitution in the position of sheriff. Yeah. That was kind of the overarching. But if you look at Pinal County, what are the, give me, give me three that you'd like to see areas of improvement under your leadership. The budget. I want to make sure that we're staying in budget. So we're working hard on delivering a proper budget, and then we're going to work on not only staying within budget, but giving the taxpayer maximum return on investment. Mm -hmm. The second thing is morale, and part of that is goes hand in hand with, with budget. If I don't create a good work environment for you, you're not going to give your employer maximum return on investment. You're not, you, you don't come to work happy. Right. It's my job to make sure that I'm giving the taxpayer, I'm creating an atmosphere that allows my employees to work well and in thus giving them better service. Right. And then we've got to make sure that we're, we're paying them appropriately and we've got to make sure that we can provide some, some other options to keep those guys there. Is, has that been a challenge because we, we hear, you know, Phoenix PD, um, tough time recruiting people, getting them, even though it's a coveted job, it's become a little more difficult now because of the incidents that have happened around the country. Um, prospective law enforcement folks are concerned about their safety and maybe keeping people away from that line of work. But are you having recruitment issues? Is it hard to do? You know, we're not seeing the numbers. I don't think anybody's seeing the numbers that they used to see. Um, but we are currently hiring, and we have had some good candidates come across, and we just hired some lateral deputies, that, which means they come from different agencies, right. and we're able to get them on the road a lot quicker. And we're also looking at hiring. That's where some, competitive pay is really important. Exactly. Right. That's, where it's, that's where it's really important. And you run the jail also. That's correct. Now, the Pinal County Jail, how many inmates do you have in there at any given time? We typically run between 550 and 600 inmates, but we have 1,500 beds. So we actually have a lot of space. We used to house, uh, as many people know, we had a contract with, the, uh, with ICE yes. to house a lot of their inmates at a, at, for a time. How, how many folks in your jail would you say are in the country illegally? You know, I don't know the numbers right now. I'm sure we've got some, and I wish I could give you those numbers. Yeah. Um, I'm sure that we have a, 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 a small percentage of it. What's your position on, you know, we've, we've had a lot of discussion in this country about sanctuary cities, which is really a loose term. It's hard to even define in many respects. But it seems to come down to, if you're in a basic stop, do you get into any questioning of people and their, and their situation? Where are they from? Where are you from? 
Uh, what's your what's your story? A lot of that ends up being done at the jail. Yeah. Probably you're not asking in the field, right? We don't Most do. agencies aren't. Yeah, and we're not, that's not what we do either. What we do is we investigate. If there's a crime that's occurring, now a traffic stop is a civil issue that could potentially turn into right. a, a criminal issue. And once that turns into a criminal issue, then we need to start ascertaining whether that, their status is. And the jail, we actually participate in a, the 287G program. Right. With the government, federal with the, government. With the federal government. So that's when you would find out someone's status is in the jail, and you think that's more pro appropriate than trying to tie up your officers doing that in the field. Right. Cause, is that? Because in the field, what's important for us is there's a crime that's occurred. It doesn't matter if you're from here or, or not from here. Our job is to investigate that crime, and our, we have to protect the people of Pinal County. Now, when they get down to the jail and they ascertain that that person is here illegally, then we have a duty to make sure that we notify the right people. Do you think that that issue has started to slow down a little bit? Yeah. Yeah, I do. This it, is interesting because this is not what we hear from the president, but we hear it from people on the ground. Yeah. That the numbers are not what they were. They're not. And there, there's more than, the, and it's not just the change in our country that we went through. That plays a part in it. Mm -hmm. There's also some internal strife within the cartels down on the Mexico side. So that's playing a part in the reduction of, of illegal immigration that we're seeing. Illegal Numbers are down. Yes. Interesting. We're back with Mark Lamb. He is the newly elected sheriff of Pinal County. And we're back in a moment on Newsmaker Sunday. We're back with Mark Lamb. He is the new uh, sheriff of Pinal County, elected in November and took office. When were you sworn in? Well, I was sworn in on January 3rd. Yeah, right after the yeah. first of the year. Yeah. How was it? To, what, what surprised you about the job? I know there are some budgetary issues right off the get, right off the get go. You know, and we, we were kind of aware of the budgetary issues, so that wasn't a tremendous surprise. Um, you know, just the amount of work. We knew there would be a lot of work, but I, I think we were running about 15-hour days, wow. six days a week. Is that the growing pains of a county that is growing? Is it's, that? what's happening that's part of it you know and it's just a changeover it's a changeover in leadership so you have to get in there and you have to understand everything that's going on and then you've got to decide okay these are the changes that you want to make how do you make these changes you have to understand your personnel mm -hmm. you have to understand you know what they do what what that particular position does whether it's overkill whether you can yeah. double it up you know those are the things we've had to do you do. guys have body cameras we do not are you trying to get them? No, we're not. You're not. Tell me why. You know, right now we're, we're running, we need more deputies. And that's a cost to the county that we're just not in a position to incur right now. We've spoken with no some No Justice of them. Department grant that will help you with this? You know, you could get the grant that will help out some of that. But you're still on the hook for a lot of it. Yeah, and it's the storage after. And, and so uh, yeah. some of the issues that we have is just the, the amount of money that it costs to store that video. And... And then everybody becomes relying, uh, reliant upon that video. And what, so. what are your deputies doing primarily in Pinal County? What are most of your calls about? Most of our calls are calls for service. We have the typical calls for service. You'll have, you know, um, information calls, uh, suspicious behavior, domestic violence. Traffic? We do a lot of traffic. Um, we do have a, a motor unit. Um, we primarily use our motor unit in the Santan Valley area. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that is because what we talked about, how rural our county is. Yeah. It's not only hard on our, our equipment, the motorcycles, it's just a poor use of those resources. So th they do work in other parts of the county, but they primarily work in that Santan Valley area, which is basically the city that we patrol. Where is the trouble spot in Pinal County? Is there a place where you've got a lot of crime that you've got to really keep an eye on? Yeah, it depends on the crime. I mean, we obviously, we don't want drugs coming into our county, and that, some of that happens on the south end of our county, and also in what we call the Copper Corridor. Uh, and those are, it, it's primarily because those are where our highways are. Mm -hmm. And so anytime you have highways, you're going to have drug trafficking coming in through those areas. Do you think that, you know, the, the statistics have shown that violent crime is on, the, is on the decline across the country and has been for many, many years. Is that what you're seeing in Pinal County? I got to be honest with you. I haven't had time to look and see what our numbers are, whether they're on the decline or not. We've been so focused on some of the, the other issues that we've had to deal with. I, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, we've still had our share, and uh, I don't feel like it's out of the ordinary. I feel like it's basically mm -hmm. what we would typically deal with. 
Um, do you have enough resources to do the job? You know, we're still ascertaining that. And we're one of the things that I that uh, during the campaign we had the board of supervisors had requested that a study be done, a staffing study, and um, for your department. Correct. Okay. And so my previous my the pre my predecessor had to, had stopped that study. And so one of the things that I did is I've been working on getting that study going. This is your jail. You, you know, you're familiar with this yes. case. Um, inmates just pounding one of your detention officers. How are things in the jail? This is a big part of your job, running that jail. The jail, for any, any sheriff will tell you that the jail is one of the biggest issues, one of the biggest areas of concern for a sheriff's office. It's where a lot of the litigation happens. And we are actually, you know, we have, just like you saw, we have detention officers and good men and women that are right in there amongst people that mm -hmm. are, are suspected of committing crimes and some of them are suspected of committing very violent crimes. Right. So they're putting themselves in harm, putting themselves in harm's way every day. When you got in, let me, let me roll tape five because, and we'll roll it uh, without the package, just the video. This kid, Tyler Cost, we covered this case. Um, young kid, high school kid, He's, he ended up in your jail for 800 days. Um, he was called a serial rapist at Tyler the time. Cost. This was how young he was when he got in there. I can't even remember how old he might have been. Maybe 14 at the time. This was a very unusual case. Do, you know, and, and this guy was presented to us from the former sheriff as a serial rapist. As time goes on, we start hearing, you know, some of this may have just been he was betting a lot of girls at, at the high school. Some of them, albeit underage, right? Was that case portrayed and given to us in a fair light concerning that young man? You know, I think there was a lot of things with that case that we were uncomfortable with as well. So when we came in, we worked with the county attorney on trying to make sure that we could get a resolution to that case. You wanted it done. We, we didn't, I don't feel like it was the appropriate place for a young man to be in jail. Of course, if he's, if he's guilty of these crimes, then obviously we need to protect the community as well. But what it was was a case that, whether unfortunate for the victims or for Tyler, it was a case that needed closure. And so one of and our primary focuses, we push for closure on that case. What was the community telling you about that case when you'd go out and talk? Did the community have questions and, say, and said, something doesn't smell right here? We had a lot of questions about that case. You know, and I wasn't, prior to taking office, I wasn't privy to a sure. lot of that information. And the county attorney likewise, when he, he got those same questions. And so we had spoken and we said, look, we need to bring some finality to this one way or the other. Do you think your predecessor used that kid? Yeah, I don't want to make any, you know, I don't want to say one way or the other. I, it was an unfortunate way that, that the case was carried out. And, and I was glad that we were able to bring some mm -hmm. closure to the family and to the families of victims, whether they were happy with it or not. What we wanted to do was bring closure. Right. Mark Lamb is our guest. He is the new sheriff of Pinnell County, a uh, fast, fast growing county in Arizona, one of the fastest. And they certainly have challenges with growth and how to manage that. We're going to talk about those issues and more when we return on Newsmaker Sunday with Mark Lamb. Our final moments on Newsmaker Sunday with Mark Lamb, who is the new sheriff of Pinnell County. It's great to see you and great to finally meet you. Yeah. Uh, Paul Penzone, you've got we've got two new sheriffs in two big big counties in Arizona. How are you getting along with him? I get along great. You know we've we've crossed paths a few times uh, before the uh, we took office, right. and then after we took office because we're both members of the uh, uh, Arizona Sheriffs Association. And then we actually one thing I did is I made it a point to try to get around to every sheriff in the state. And one of the sheriffs that I met with was Sheriff Penzone. If there's one thing that all those sheriffs agree on that's an issue, what would it be? Uh, we still uh, probably illegal aliens and probably the drugs that are coming into it's our state. It's still a big it's issue. It's still a big issue. Even though it's dropped a bit. Even though it's dropped a bit, you know, these are things that affect our communities mm -hmm. every day. You know, people ask me, well, how do you beat drugs? Well, you stop using them, first of all. <laughs> right. And that's the, that's, the, that's the simple answer. Mark Lamb, our guest on Newsmaker Sunday. We'll have you back. Thank okay, you. we appreciate it. Back. The new sheriff of Pinal County, wish you well, and thank you for coming on the program. Thank appreciate you, John. It. We'll thank see you, you next week.